Now, I did want when Vader slash Anakin said this line, you mm-hmm. didn't kill Anakin Skywalker, I did. I needed Obi-Wan to pipe up with, from a certain point of view. <laughs> they said you were the best in the parsec. Welcome to Parsec Passion. A podcast about Disney Plus Star Wars TV shows. Today we're talking about Obi-Wan Episode 6, Part 6. My name's Bubba, and with me as always is somebody who, let's be honest, needs to keep the helmet on. It's Catfish. Catfish, how you doing? Oh, I love that you are going back to the Mandalorian because soon we will be able to as well. Bubba, I'm so glad. You know, Bubba, I've always been here. You just weren't ready to see. Oh, yeah, that's true. Catfish, we've been saying this all season long. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, they didn't give these episodes titles. It's called episode six, part six. Did you give this episode a title? I for sure did, Bubba. And it turned out to be double B. Wait, double B? Yeah, blame Ben. Uh, it turns out uh, we wouldn't have had to go through all these shenanigans in the first place if Ben had just taken care of Darth Vader when he had the chance. Oh, man. Of course, we could say the same thing about Darth Vader if he had taken out Ben when he had the chance. Darth how, about if he, a, how about if Vader had taken out Reva when he had the chance? How, Both how chances. about it? It's Batman villainy, villainry all over the place. But Bubba? Yeah. I'm now ready to give my rating for this episode. Are you ready? I'm 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 on pins and more pins. Okay, I gave this eight, what I like to call also double B's. Wait, double B again? Yeah, uh, brightness boosting. Bubba, this episode was so dang dark, and I don't mean in its tone. I'm talking about oh. lighting. Mm. <laughs> I was watching this in a completely dark room, and I was still like, is someone something happening on the screen right now? Now look. I'll just say this. This is kind of for the whole series. This was cool. I'm confused by people who find it their favorite series, but maybe those people who are more tied to the movies than I am. Bigger Mm -hmm. fan. You know, I mean, is it sad that I want to see more in this world than that's not the main stuff? Like, you know, like like Mandalorian is not the main stuff. Mm -hmm. Or would it then just be space stuff? And not Star Wars. I I was happy we had it. It's kind of cool. Fleshes out more of their relationship. But I don't know. In the end, yeah. did I need this? Was it necessary? Was it my favorite Star Mm. Wars TV show? The answer to all those questions to me is no, no, and no. But you still went 8 out of 10. That's actually a very good rating. There was lots of good stuff going on here. Just overall for the series, when people hear my complaints, my double Cs. Wait, double Cs? Yeah, catfish complaints. They'll know where I'm coming from, that it just wasn't as jazzed for this show. But Bubba, Mm -hmm. I do have some more double C's. Even more. Okay. Double B's, double C's. You got them like, you got to get them like hotcakes. Let's see. Yeah, but these aren't catfish complaints. These are another double C's. Double C. Yeah. Catfish questions. Oh Ooh. boy, that's a old school double C right there. That it sure people is. who've been following this podcast for ages are now questioning why they've been doing it. Bubba, they're going to yeah. question it even more because, and maybe you can completely illuminate me on this. Mm-hmm. My question is, what was Reva's plan? Or in this episode, her was, plan in this episode. Maybe it was why was it her plan? I, I mean, I understand the turnaround. I just don't understand. What, did she want to kill Luke? If she did, why did she want to kill Luke? And then she, ch- I understand why she changed, but I just don't understand why that was her plan in the first place. And that maybe I missed something, and that happens sometimes. Catfish yeah, questions sometimes. are easily answered. Sometimes. So, uh, every time. Bubba, yeah. forget what I have to say. Give me your rating, and then maybe you can answer Catfish's questions, the double C, in, in, in after your rating. What was your rating for this episode? My score is slightly crazy in that I'm going to have to do some math to get to my score. So first of all, for part six, episode six, the final episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi, I'm going to give it 10 double S's, yet at the same time, subtract one double T. Okay, 10 double S's? Sacrilegious statements. Okay. This is a sacrilegious statement. The two lightsaber battles between Obi-Wan versus Darth Vader slash Anakin in this series 
I think I've enjoyed more than their epic lightsaber battle in Revenge of the Sith. I am what some people might call a Revenge of the Sith apologist in my ranking apologist. of Star Wars. In my ranking of Star Wars movies, I've had Revenge of the Sith sometimes as high as third, probably no lo lower than fifth in my favorite Star Wars movies. And yet that lightsaber battle, which is kind of what the whole series was leading up to, those three films, the prequel films, maybe the CG took me out of it, maybe the kind of over elaborate ways. Wait, we're not fighting in a hallway. We're fighting on a balcony. Now we're fighting on pipes. Now we're fighting on different pipes. Now the pipes were on and fallen into lava, yet we're still fighting. Now we're fighting on cables as we're swinging around. I love Maybe it. that took me out of it. But the fight in episode three, I loved. And I loved this fight. 10 out of 10. And I'm going to go a bit further on because the first 15 minutes of this episode, I was not feeling it at all. And it was what I like to call double T's, TV tropes. And so oh. I'm subtracting one point from my score for the beginning of this episode in kind of the TV tropes that this series fell into that make me think this might have been better as a movie as it was originally planned. So, okay, so 10 this minus, is very difficult math. So you start 10 off minus with one 10. It is 9 out of 10. I'm oh, giving wow. this 9 out of 10. After okay. those first 15 minutes where I was like, oh my God, have they really messed this up? I think the rest of the episode was almost perfect. So 9 out of 10, that's my rating. I'm very high on it. I think you're asking about Reva's plan. I say let's get to that as we review Reva's storyline in this series and in this episode. We always say, who cares what we think? We are just two old OG Star Wars fans talking on a podcast. We want to know what you think. On our Twitter feed, at Double PHQ, that's the word, double single letter P for podcast, HQ for headquarters, the Parsec Passion Podcast is mm -hmm. part of the Double P Media family, at Got Double PHQ on Twitter. We asked you guys, what did you think of the final episode? Grade it for us. First option was brilliant, a.k.a. badass Baru. And 64% said this final episode was brilliant. We said, was it good? And we gave that rating a raging rock pile. 14% said it was good. We said, is the episode just, I, I, is it Alderaan air? And 14% of the respondents said, eh, it's just all right. And then we said, for the lowest rating, we said, is it literally an empty holster? And 7% said, it was an empty holster. Still, if you take the good and the brilliant, you are darn near 80%. You're pretty much at 79% uh, said it was brilliant and good. We're glad you guys liked it. We gave it a nine and an eight, so we're pretty high on it as well. We guys, we want you to subscribe and listen to us, and thank you for being on this journey. The Parsec Passion Podcast is going to be back covering Andor which drops on Disney Plus on August 31st, 2022. That's just 71 days from now. Woo. Holy cow. But you don't have to wait that long. You don't? Not on not on this feed, not on the Parsec Passion podcast feed, but on our other feed, our Double P podcast feed. Next week, we're going to be starting season two of Only Murders in the Building. In August, right before Andor comes out, we're going to bring back the Joffrey of podcast feed with House of the Dragon season one. We've got yeah. Magpie Murders. Never We've also it. got 1899, Babylon Berlin Season 4, The Crown Season 5, His Dark Material Season 3. Matt, our good buddy Double M, is going to be covering The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power on Amazon. There are a million podcasts coming for you in the latter half of 2022. So yeah. please follow us at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ. If you're on YouTube, subscribe, leave those comments. We want to know what you think. Wow, Bubba, how much does this cost these people? A lot of their time. Their precious, yeah. precious, uh, precious time. time. If you're a loyal listener, you are losing a lot of time listening to two goofy guys like like us but hey we appreciate you please give us those reviews i don't think we've had a new review since uh we were doing the book of boba fett coverage so please on your podcast app of choice whether it's youtube whether it's on apple podcast spotify stitcher whatever podcast app you're using give us a review it always helps what about that person listening on iheart radio we want you to iheart our podcast feed we need you to do it love it all right, Catfish. Mm -hmm. So this show, we didn't really do this too much, but it feels like there are two clean stories happening in this episode. There's the double R. Double R. Reva's Revenge. Reva's Revenge. And of course, there's the double D. Double D. Darth Dealings. Which do you want to deal? Do you want to deal with Darth Vader first, or do you want to get to Reva's Raging first? Holy cow. Well, you know what? Since I have the questions about it and mm -hmm. the other storyline is probably more exciting for most people, let's deal with, with uh, Reva first. All right. So she's actually what the episode begins with. The very first thing in the episode 
See how I did that? Reva showing up on Tatooine looking for Owen because of the message she found at the end of episode five. And so, Catfish, let's talk about it. This Mm -hmm. is Reva. It was revealed last week, (laughs) kind of at the last moment, that Reva isn't really an Inquisitor who's so desperate to gain favor and become Grand Inquisitor like we thought. No, Reva's real goal is to get close enough to Darth Vader to kill him. She had that opportunity in episode five. So admittedly, we found that out in the same episode where her goal failed. But she got close enough to kill Vader, but Vader was not going to be killed. Vader was too smart. He destroyed her. That was her goal. Here's a catfish question that's easy to answer. Uh, How close uh, did she get to killing Darth Vader? I would say a couple couple of times her lightsaber got within a foot of him. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, what are percentages? All right, basically, uh, I mean, if it was me, I'd be like, I got no shot. She should have realized that. No, but she was driven by rage. She was driven by revenge. And then what happens when your whole life, you spent 10 years, she had spent 10 years on this plot Mm -hmm. of somehow surviving getting stabbed by Vader, Vader who killed all her friends there at the Jedi Temple. And she's going to build up her anger. She's going to get stronger in the Force. She's going to get her own lightsaber. She's going to get into the Inquisitors. She's going to build it up. And as soon as she's got her shot, she's going to stab and kill Vader. Got it. That and then plan your decade, your decade plan goes to hell. Mm-hmm. in a handbasket. You're left for dead again. The way he, Vader defeated you when you were 10 years old, he's defeating you again when you're, you know, when he, when you're 10 years later. Mm-hmm. You still hate Vader. You still want to right? do something. You still want to get revenge, as she mm-hmm. said she did in this episode. She wants to mm-hmm. get revenge for her slain buddies. Somebody has to die because they died is her thought process. It should have been Vader. She couldn't do it. So she's beaten. She's pathetic, but she's still filled with anger wait a minute, hey, here's this kid, this kid, they're hiding. Wait a minute, this kid, and we don't see how she discovers it, this kid is Vader's kid. I'm going to go kill Anakin's kid. I may not be able to kill him, but I'll kill his kid, and that'll get revenge for my dead buddies. That's her goal. I agree they haven't really set this up too much, but admittedly, her plan to kill Vader, they didn't set up much. They just sprang it on us in the fifth episode. So what do you think of that plan? It it makes sense. S- somehow somehow that uh, eluded catfish. So, uh, you know, I would say I would put myself uh, easily at the level of uh, a 12-year-old uh, right. as regarding intelligence. So I would say uh, maybe uh, that needed to be made a whole lot clearer. No, I agree. The verbal cues for her plan, that being her plan, aren't revealed until the end of this episode. So just like we didn't find out her plan until the fifth episode near the end to kill Vader, the fact that she was going to get revenge by killing Vader's kid in this episode, you didn't find out until after she had already lost the chance and given up on the chance of killing Vader's kid. So I agree. I don't think it was spelled out well at all. That's part of the reason why I docked this episode. This whole, uh, we talk about it over and over again. Give the characters uh, clear goals, and that way we can understand where they're trying to get what the obstacles they're facing are, and pretty much are we rooting for them to accomplish this goal or are we rooting against for them for, for them to accomplish this goal? That gives us um, what I like to call stakes, uh, mm, which uh, delicious stakes. her storyline does not have here in this episode until, uh, again, the stakes are done. So that's uh, well, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. You don't understand why she's doing it, but let's talk about what she does. Yeah, let's. Why she not? Back, that's what we're she here. She remembers for. she was on Tatooine. She remembers mm-hmm. that guy Owen. She doesn't know anything about him other than hey, there was a guy on Owen uh, on Tatooine. And here, Bail Organa's talking about going to see Owen and the kid on Tatooine. She runs into the redneck a.k.a. the mean manager who ran the sushi bar where Obi-Wan worked. And I just thought, oh, my goodness, they're rednecks in on Tatooine in uh, Star Wars now that have southern accents. Ouch. You know, you would think a place that has a lot of rednecks, uh, there would be more than one Owen. Hey, no. Hey, no. <laughs> So Owen has brought his uh, his son, his boy, his Luke, Lord, with yep. him to town to get some parts. And a villager runs up to Owen and says, hey, that scary lady who was here before, the Inquisitor, she's looking for you. Mm-mm. Owen gets Luke home. Peru, his wife, can tell something's up. And then we kind of don't hear him telling her exactly what it is. We hear the fallout of that conversation. We're like, okay, we got to do something. We got to do something. And Owen says, Ben is gone. Peru says back to him, whose fault is that? And I'm just thinking to myself, gentlemen, 
women will never let you forget that you messed up. Yeah. Women oh, will never God. let you forget you screwed it up. You oh, go, Blue. You put him in his place. It's so good. And then she says, I'm not putting anyone else in danger. We are enough. You and me. Right. But mostly me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay, let's let's go to it right now. Your life is in danger. Who do you want protecting you? Owen or Brew? After this episode, I'm Baru, baby. Out of 100, Baru. You know what? I decided right when she said that it was it was Baru. I didn't need any more clarification. Oh, she was. She was like, "What? Go and hide? No, this is my house. I'm gonna freaking anybody steps up to me, they're gonna get a sawed off blaster shot in the face. She's got sawed off blasters hidden in a cubby." Hell yeah, Baru. She's decided to go out in a blaze of glory. This is the hero we didn't know we needed. You go, Baru. Heck yeah. She's ready to rock. I am team Baru all the way. I want to talk something about this show. I, I haven't talked about it much on the show, but I've sometimes mm -hmm. found the effects of this show not up to what I would call Star Wars par. But one thing that's impressive is they actually built this homestead, this courtyard here of the homestead, where Lucas, when he went and did the prequels, some of the homestead, admittedly the courtyard is still there, that's a real place, but some of the places Lucas just did a green screen on. If you watch that famous scene of Attack of the Clothes where Anakin and uh, Padme are talking about him slaughtering the Tuscan village, some of that is a real set. But in the background, there's a lot of green screen where they just digitally paint in the stuff that was in there in A New Hope. Here they built it, and so I want to give a shout out to this. So Owen, he lies to Luke. He blamed, it's like, oh, these Tuscans, they're they're raiding. We got to put you somewhere safe. So we're going to put you here. If you run into any trouble, you know what to do. Run. And Owen's like, everything's going to be fine. Brew, it's going to be okay. And then they shut a metal door on his face and lock him in. <laughs> That's when you know, oh, it's going to be fine. We're just going to put you in the safe room and lock you in there. Later, kid. I love it. He's safer in there than hanging out with either Ben or Owen. <laughs> Uh, the only person I trust is uh, Baru. Reva approaches the homestead. It's like the sun has gone down. She's attacking at night. But if you have the closed caption on, it mentions that she's panting weakly. She did take a lightsaber through the gut for the second time in her life. She can't be doing well. She enters the courtyard. She ignites her lightsaber. Then it is the OK Corral. Owen and Baru start blasting. Oh, and he's shooting, he's shooting, and when the shoot shots don't work, he tries to throw potted plants on her. I love it. Go, Owen. You try anything. Ah, uh, Owen, Owen, Owen. How about this? Is Owen going to be in more trouble with his wife because he couldn't protect Luke from Reva or because he destroyed a lot of the plants that she had been growing? I mean, you know how hard it is to grow plants on a desert planet? Come on. Now, Owen, he's kind of fallen to the last stand. He's defending the door. He's the last last defender at the Alamo. You know, he tries. I'll give him this much. He tries. He, he hmm. gets a crate knocked in him, so he loses his blaster. Then he picks up a pole, tries to hit her with a pole. He just can't do anything. Reva knocks him out of the way. Before she does it, she does say, you really love the boy like he's your own. Owen, he is my own. Hmm. All right, way to go, Uncle Owen. Way to, way to stand up for the kid. And Owen, you know, for as much as we're dissing him, he did get a shot and punch Reva right in the lightsaber scar. Good work, Owen. Yeah. You got beaten. You got beaten down, buddy. I mean, uh, not only that, but uh, the next thing that happens to Reva is she goes to the door and Baru just gives her an open hand slap on the face. I mean, disrespectful. Baru knows how to TCB, man. There's, there's no <laughs> shooting or put, put, put your foot in a round. Just boom. Let her know who's boss. Heck yeah. But Brew can't stand to Reva either. And so Luke, he takes off like a coward. No, I'm kidding. He's been told to run. So he escapes out of the little room and starts running. Reva is following him. She's running after Luke, who's run off into a canyon. Reva can feel him. He's right above her on a ledge. She uses the force to destroy the ledge Luke was on. He Good. tumbles down. He gets knocked out. This is important just for continuity in A New Hope, the very first Star Wars movie. Luke Skywalker sees the lightsaber and he's like, what's this? I've never heard of this before. You don't want to have him seeing a lightsaber when he's 10 and then 10 years later go, what's this thing? Oh, yeah, I saw this before. So he's knocked out. He doesn't see Reva's lightsaber. Good. Reva has her target. Last week's episode, she couldn't kill Vader. But now here he is. He's passed out. All she has to do is stab him. And then she has flashbacks to what Vader did to her and her friends during Order 66. 
she doesn't do it. She can't do it. As much as she wants revenge, is killing a kid making her an identical monster to Anakin Skywalker. What do you yeah. think, Catfish? That is her that is her arc on the season. I have pointed out on many podcasts that I think that if they had given her that clear goal or if we had audience had known her clear goal by episode one or episode two, we could have enjoyed this journey more. What do you think about this journey, which ends with her unable to kill young Luke? What do you think? Maybe I could have bought it if it had been set up earlier in the episode. I just don't buy it. It is too exactly like the youngling slaughter. I mean, she's got enough time to be like, hmm, why is this kid on the planet? Why isn't he being raised by? I mean, even, you know, even if she doesn't do that, even if she doesn't stop to think for one second in the time it takes her to get there, the time it takes him to tra track him down to think like, gee, maybe this kid's being hidden. It is too exactly like what Darth Vader did. I'm never going to buy it. It's a waste of a storyline in the last episode. Now I'm thinking about going down lower on this episode. Because oh, wow. this makes yeah. me angry. It makes me angry. Well, in the end, she's turned around. She didn't become a monster like Vader. So the classic thing is Vader became a monster. Anakin became mm -hmm. a monster. And did his yeah, evilness right. cause other monsters? Well, in this case, a monster that might have been created by another monster's evilness seemingly stopped. And she's crying. And this is where she says, meaning her friends who died on Order 66, she says, I failed them. Obi-Wan's like, no, you didn't fail your dead youngling friends. You've given them honor. And Obi-Wan also gives her this uh, almost uh, philosophical note. Who you become now is up to you. Reva buries her lightsaber in the sand. That's the end of her seemingly wicked ways. What do you think? You're, you're still just frustrated by it and want to go down even lower on the episode? Yeah, I didn't buy it. I didn't, I didn't, uh, you, you can't you can't give me. Yeah. Well, OK, let me. You, I, I, you're I, asking I, me. You're asking me to. I didn't I didn't believe that she had been transferred, transferred her anger on to Luke and it doesn't make sense considering, I mean, if Luke was right there after she got defeated after Darth Vader, but, you know, it took her some time to get there. First, she had to, like, get herself off the floor. I mean, it, it just feels like you're asking me to give her redemption for something that I never believed that she would ever go that far. So then it's like, oh, she went that far, but now redemption. It, it all happens too quick for me. Well, I want to say that I've been pointing out the notes I've said about Reva in all of these episodes, but just the immediacy in this episode of, okay, she is on Tatooine. Okay, she is going to the house. Okay, she is stalking them. That did relatively work for me. And I would say Reva's storyline for me works a bit of the way the way the prequels do. I always mention that if you look at the story, if you just wrote out the story of the prequels, and maybe don't include so much Jar Jar, but if you just wrote out the stories of the prequels, I think it makes sense. It just was executed poorly and multiple times by Lucas and sometimes just okay by Lucas and sometimes good by Lucas. But there was a lot of execution problem in Lucas's prequel story. I feel like in this episode, Reva did work for me, but on the whole, for me, I think her story does make sense. It was just executed poorly. So that is my thought. Listeners, we've had this debate right at the top of this episode that we're both really high on talking about kind of the toughest things in this episode. Once again, who cares what we think? I am imploring you, write to us at Double PHQ on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Double PHQ on YouTube. Please go down and write these comments. I want to know how you felt about the Reverse storyline. If it didn't work for you at all, I'm not saying it should have. I'm just saying I want to know, describe why it didn't work for you. If it did work for you, and I mentioned last week that my sister had no problems with Reva. Admittedly, she wanted Reva to die when she took that lightsaber through the stomach. My sister liked Reva all through the series. If you're one of those people, write to us and let us know why. We want this to be a discussion. We want you to talk to us as we talk about this incredibly interesting and yet challenging on multiple levels show. Bubba, I just I sorry, I just want to make a quick distinction because you had a you had a lot more problem with her storyline previous to this episode than right. I did. Mm -hmm. I had assumed that she was a youngling and that there's something interesting going on with her. So earlier I didn't mind the turn. It was a little abrupt, but at least I felt like, okay, I had a sense there was something going on with her. So I bought it before. I didn't have a problem with her storyline until this episode. Or the execution of it, to be honest with you, not not as big as you did. So I just wanted to clear that up. If people think that I'm a that I've always been a hater on Reva's storyline, just just episode six. 
Blame Ben. <laughs> blame episode six. Blame Benny. All right. Hey, now that we've gone through this rough stuff, let's get to the person who I think almost always works. Our boy Darth and our Hell boy yes. our boy Obi Wan. And I want to say once again, the first fifteen minutes of this episode, I had a lot of trouble with, and I can even say the exact point when the fifteen minute mark hit. So it begins. The Imperials are on the tails of our hero. You know what? It's like they are in deep dew. This is the beginning of a new hope. A small ship is being chased by a Star Destroyer. It is yeah, getting but, uh, shot and rocked by a Star Destroyer. But I feel like what we're focusing on the wrong thing, Bubba. We need to know if Obi-Wan is okay. I mean, we oh. need an Obi-Wan check-in. they, they got to come in and say, the hyperdrive's almost ready. Yep. Move all power to the rear shields. We'll head yep. for Tessin. Obi-Wan, anything we need to process? <laughs> You know, I'm thinking, I'm trying to, maybe I'm too much into this show. I'm trying to think like Vader. Vader, release the TIE Fighters. Does this ship have a tractor beam? Let's go. I know the Death Star had one which got the Millennium Falcon. Let's do something. Let's take these guys out. But no, like you're like you're saying, th we're in a rough time. And one thing that you do not see too much in Star Wars is because you're in a rough time, you're in a dangerous world, where your life is on edge. Deborah Chow did a lot of handheld camera work in this episode. Did you notice that, Catfish? Like, there was a lot oh. of... These weren't cameras that were kind of locked on a tripod or on a rig of some sort. This was a lot of handheld camera work and camera movements just ever so slightly to let you know we're in trouble. Things aren't stable. Things are on the precipice of falling apart. Yeah, uh, it, it really is. And that's, you know, uh, that's why there's all the action and the movement. Because, uh, you know what, if Ben's in trouble, he might just bail on you. Right. He says, hey, we're doomed. <laughs> right. Roken. How much time is it going to take to fix Roken? Four hours. This time Obi-Wan doesn't say, you have one. Instead, he's just like, uh-oh. <laughs> and then he realizes, hey, he's got to do something. He's got to sacrifice himself. He tells the crowd, he's like, you've spent 10 years protecting the Jedi. This is my chance to return that favor. Right. And my question from the crowd is, okay, so let me get this clear. You are going to leave here in a much smaller ship that may not even be noticed. I completely believe that you're protecting us by leaving. Obi-Wan tells him, you are all the future. To Leia specifically. <laughs> About 10 you're minutes the worth. <laughs> you're what needs to survive. He tells Haja, hey, promise to get Leia home. And Haja I mean, does. I mean, well, wait, but, 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 I, I mean, I like, uh, I love Haja, but... It's I don't know whether he's just humble bragging or 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 they're like we need to give him more to say, but he never passes up the chance. Ninety percent of his dialogue is telling people that he is a liar and a fake, and I so I don't know whether this is like some super four D chess reverse psychology or overriding. But honest to God, it's like hi, my name is Haja, and I will completely rip you off if you give me a chance. Hey, Haja, I heard you had a good stock tip. Uh, yeah, I do. Stock up my cabinets and you'll be <laughs> rewarded later. Well, Haja, how could you? <laughs> That's what I do. Now, I'm completely open about it. Haja, right, exactly. <laughs> Haja, I'll rip you off. I guarantee it. <laughs> so this is where part of the way I mentioned I had trouble with these first 15 minutes in I think, boy, if this was a movie, it wouldn't do this. And I kept mentioning TV tropes. I realize, I think everybody realizes, okay, mm -hmm. Obi-Wan, you go a different way to distract the Empire so these people can escape. Yeah. Right. Eight minutes into the episode, he hasn't done it yet. No, he keeps talking about it. Every time he keeps talking about it, I wonder if I wonder if someone's going to come and say to him, only, only 10 minutes left to gas up your ship. <laughs> Only five minutes. It's like, stop talking about it and just go already. He does have a present for little Leia. Roken found something. It's a holster. It's a blaster holster. What do you think about this? Oh, my God. I mean, uh, you know, whatever inappropriate here. Blaster holder. Here's a gun with empty bullets. I'm taking all the bullets with me. Well, I mean, Obi-Wan. He tells Obi-Wan. He says, please tell your father I tried. You know, I have been agitated against uh, mm -hmm. Double L. Wait, Double L? Yeah, yeah. Little Leia's sophisticated oh. brattiness. But, and mm -hmm. I, again, I said I'm in favor of setting new paths and don't do a lot of callbacks. But I swear to God, I would have stood up and cheered if Little Leia at this point had said, There is no try. Get off the pot or shit, you will. Oh, come on. She's 10 years old. She's not going to. Hey, 
yeah, come on. She absolutely would. Okay, so we're cutting back and forth between Tatooine and the and the mm -hmm. Empire chasing these heroes. And so we keep cutting back, and Obi-Wan has still not got off the ship. Now he's no. looking at his lightsaber. He's trying to talk to Qui-Gon. He still hasn't got off the ship. Here's Roken. And once again, if this were a movie, we wouldn't spend the time having this motivational speech. You know, the goodbye between Obi-Wan and Roken. Roken, there are not many leaders left. People follow you. Don't stop. Obi-Wan, you don't stop. Get off, get off, the, get ship. off the ship. Get off the ship and save people. It took till 11 minutes into the episode. Obi-Wan finally hops in this little smaller ship, distracts the Empire by sure, going sure. in a different way. Uh -huh. Now, hey, yeah. the Grand Inquisitor, he's not only alive, he's mouthy. Oh, boy. Vader knows that little ship. He can feel it. That little ship has Obi-Wan. He wants to go after Obi-Wan. Grand Inquisitor thinks, oh, this is a perfect time for somebody wants my opinion. He says, right? My lord, we must continue our pursuit of the insurgents. Now is our chance to wipe out this network in its entirety. We cannot prioritize one lone Jedi. Oh, I mean, what? my only assumption is that the Grand Inquisitor was so close to death that he doesn't fear it anymore. <laughs> because I... Okay. Would never, ever use never. the word must with Darth Vader. No. So, Bubba, I thought a little bit. Okay. And I thought, like, you know, must is a no-go, right? No. But there are times you want to, you know, you've got an idea and you'd like to express it. And so right. I thought what I would do is come up with other verbs okay. along with their adverbs to kind of all modify right. the strength of the verb. And they're all doubles, Bubba. So okay, here are the words okay, I would suggest yeah. using instead of must. The first one is sure. double S. Double S. Yes. I submissively suggest. <laughs> okay. That's that's actually one. Vader let that slide. Sure, sure, sure. Number two is double M. Double M. Yeah. I meekly mention. Okay, uh, and it makes then the sense, third but... one is a double P. Double P. Yeah, I passively propose. <laughs> All right. All those <laughs> yes are much better and safer than the word must. All right. Well, let's have a little debate right now. Okay. Vader's like to hell with this. That is Obi Wan Kenobi, Jedi Master. We've got him right there. Let's go get him. Grand Inquisitor is thinking, hey, we've got this insurgency, this growing rebellion. That's a big part of them in this other ship. Let's go mm -hmm. get them. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, who's correct, Vader or the Grand Inquisitor? 112%. It is Darth Vader. These Inquisitors, first of all, their jaw's been rooting out all the bums for years and years and years, and they've been doing it. They're still successful, but Obi-Wan is a big fish. Oh, yeah. And he has got a lot of the force left, and Darth is right to hit him while he is weak. So that's what I say, Bubba. What about you? I don't ever question Vader's ideas. No. Okay, go, okay, I love it. Yeah, it's a bit, very good. No, no, very no, good. No, um, yeah. um, Darth I, Vader must. And I mean, uh, I submissively suggest that Darth Vader. How go about this? After what if you? Yeah, this is how I would do it. Mm -hmm. My lord, we must continue our pursuit of the things you want us to pursue. <laughs> You like that? I, I that I would be. I, I mean, my only concern is, yeah. what if you say, "My lord, we must," and then you don't get to the rest of it? <laughs> oh no! Okay, okay. <laughs> he just force chokes. I need you to flip it around. My yeah, lord, yeah, yeah. your brilliant ideas are what we must do. Yeah, I love it. There we go. That's smart. Lead with his brilliance, and but also wimp out. Always, always. Now, I do like, I've mentioned some of these effects I didn't have, didn't enjoy in the show too much, but I do love that this Star Destroyer, when it has to turn to face this little tiny ship, it's not, you know, it takes a while to turn a big ship. It's not mm -hmm. nimble. Obi-Wan has pointed his ship down towards this planet or moon out here in the system. Vader, prepare my ship. I will face him alone. Oh. And then, of course, the brother who doesn't appear in this episode, fifth brother, says, fine. I was really busy working on um, um, uh, Inquisitor stuff. I mean, you have to imagine there was more work for Fifth Brother, and then he just got cut. There was I a mean, lot of paperwork. He had to. He, he mm -hmm. couldn't be here for this. He just had to do a lot of. Paperwork. We need all the deleted scenes of just Fifth Brother. Just cobble <laughs> that into an extra episode. Good grief! How many PO forms do I have to fill out for this? These <laughs> die fighters. Oh goodness gracious! So okay, 
Obi-Wan lands on a planet and these planets or moons, whatever it is, they always have a, they always have a trait, you know, it's the swamp planet. It's the desert planet. It's this planet. So here we're on the stalagmite or is it stalactite? planet. Bubba, I think it's stalagmite that comes from the ground and stalactite that comes from the ceiling, but I could be wrong. All right. Well, let's do a honest to God, real live Google search. And it says, still, which one did you say? This I said planet stalagmite is? comes from you the You are correct. Yay! You are correct. Good work, Catfish. So we're on stalagmite planet. What did you think of this design? It is very barren. And as you pointed out, it's very dark. But I did like the look of it. I did think, okay, this looks otherworldly. Yeah, it was completely awesome. But I'm just waiting for the bar where there's like all of a sudden a thousand people in the bar. <laughs> right, right. We're out here in the middle of nowhere. So let's go to the highly populated cantina. So, you know, it isn't just Vader and Obi-Wan. Guess what Obi-Wan finds? He finds Lola in his pocket. Hashtag oh, hello. euphemism. <laughs> <clears throat> hello. Ner nervous beeps. I understand, Lola. <laughs> hello. <laughs> But that's a cute callback to how Leia was saying uh, Lola calmed everybody when they was were nervous. And Obi-Wan joked, well, maybe I need her. Leia put Lola in Obi's pocket. That's the sentence I say all the time. <laughs> and then I it, love it. You have it, closed it, captions. Did you have closed it, captions up in this episode, Catfish? There was a lot of great things. I mentioned nervous beeps just now. Vader lands. He exits the ship. And the closed caption just lets you know, ominous music playing. Hell love it. Yeah. yeah. I felt it, but it was good to be reinforced that it was indeed ominous music. Right. What am I listening to? Oh, yes, that's right. Ominous music. Obi-Wan landed his ship on this stalagmite planet that is exactly at the 15-minute mark on the Disney Plus counter. And this is when the episode flipped from being I didn't feel it to I was all in, and the rest of the episode really worked for me. It is go time. Vader and Obi-Wan together. It just always worked. I loved it in episode three. I loved it here. Vader, have you come to destroy me, Obi-Wan? Obi-Wan, I will do what I must, which is the exact same line he said uh, for from a different prompt in Revenge of the Sith before their duel. So Let's he get said it. He rumble! said it. So this is the second yeah, time. So Bubba, what we have, we have what I like to call a non upple F. Non upple F. Okay, yeah. this is gonna be a good one. Let's hear it. Yeah. yeah. Fight, 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 flip, fight, force, fight, fall. Failed. That tells me a lot of F words, Catfish. <laughs> did you like this fight? How did you like the beginning of it? Oh, man, I I, I love this whole fight. I, I, I loved it. It was awesome. And the only thing that was more awesome was, spoiler alert, the second fight. Oh, man. Obi-Wan at the beginning. They are fighting. And this, you know, I mentioned that it's sacrilegious to say this, but I find this fight more enjoyable than the Revenge of the Sith fight. And why? And once again, this is a personal preference. I thought these guys have the force. They just wouldn't, wouldn't just be using the lightsaber. They would be using force powers left and right. They're pushing each other with a force. And it starts very early in this fight. Obi-Wan tries to drop a stalagmite on top of Vader. And Vader, just like last week when Reva tried something and Vader was like, talk to the hand. Vader stops it so easy. Hashtag nope. Let's go, baby. Hell yes. So Come good. Come on. And then, like I said, use the force. It is a rock throwing contest. It's not just rock throwing. At one point, Vader punches Obi-Wan in the face. Yeah, Vader. get him. Yes. Get if him. You, if you thought this person is your brother, if you love this person, and then you completely hated them, you would not you would not fight friendly. You would not fight no. fair. You would I mean the only out. better thing to do is if she done if he'd done it Baru style, open face slap, <laughs> oh, open no. palm slap to the face. Oh, that would have been good. Baru Brooke should have taught him how to do it. I completely agree. I mean, think of all the little moments in this fight. Another one, Vader uses the force to pull some rocks along the ground, which take out Obi-Wan's legs. Oh, so smart. And then what we want, or, you know, I'll make an assumption. I'm saying we, but I really mean me. I want Vader to be powerful. Vader puts his hand on the ground and he breaks the damn earth. Yes. Obi-Wan falls into a hole. Wait for it. Vader now has the high ground, but he's like, out of hell with this. I'm just going to drop a mountain on your butt. Yeah, I love it. Did you truly think you could defeat me? You have failed, master. Love I it. do. I love it too until... Vader does the Batman villain walk away. And he's like, you know what? I've waited to kill this guy for years, but there's no need to double check. 
He's dead. But but Bubba, yeah. Obi Wan isn't dead. Wait, I what? never guessed. Yes. Oh wait a minute. He did. He did. He's, there's a lot of audio flashbacks. It's all people smack talking him. The yeah. only thing that's missing is yeah. a taunt from Hodge. I like. I'm a crook. I'm a thief. A scoundrel. Tax evader. I hate puppies, but I'm still better than you. Now, Catfish, you know why this flashback was audio only? Why? He wasn't in the back of tank. Yeah. If he had well, been in the back of tank, he could have seen all these. Well, then all of a sudden there must have been a back to tank because he has some video flashbacks to the no. Skywalker kids. He's failed both little Leia and little Luke. Oh, and man. then he decides it's over. I'm just going to give up. Yep. No, I'm sorry. I dreamed that. He forces the rocks up and then force skips himself up the tunnel, <laughs> which was a bit of, um, I would say, awkward CGI, but delicious. He's going to get it. He's going yeah. to get it. This is Superman 2. Spoiler alert for Superman 2. We thought he didn't have his powers, and then he did, and he's just going to take out suckers. Obi-Wan officially got his groove back buried oh. underneath that mountain. I love oh, that. man. And you know who has his groove for a second, though? Who? Vader. He's mean? having a peaceful walk in yeah. a beautiful, dark-lit forest. Yeah. His life's work's complete. Of course. Now that his anger has been sated, he's ready to turn to the light side and live mm -hmm. his life peacefully on a desert planet. Perfect. But then he stops and thinks, did I forget something? Like mm -hmm. to make sure Obi-Wan mm -hmm. was dead. And then <laughs> Obi-Wan makes a cowardly attack from behind. Oh, <laughs> Obi-Wan was giving him a bit of his own medicine. Remember how Vader would pop up in episode three and just slash from out of the blue? That's the cowardly way. The ca Zach is the effective way. And suddenly it is odd. There was a big deal made in episode three about how Vader was so much more powerful and Obi-Wan was such a mess. Obi-Wan was always fighting with his two hands on his lightsaber while Vader in episode three only had one hand on it. For moments here in this part of the fight, Obi-Wan is the one with only one hand on a lightsaber and Vader has both hands on the lightsaber. It is good. Now, Vader, he's still powerful. Obi-Wan got one swing right at him and Vader was able to stop the lightsaber's momentum with his palm. But Obi-Wan is pulling no punches this time. He pushes Vader back into the rocks and Holy the big cow. dude is staggering. Obi-Wan, you want a rock fight? I'll give you a damn rock fight. And he picks up what feels like a different mountain and is just throwing it at Vader. And Vader is just taking it. Vader is just Holy taking cow. these hits, man. I mean, Hell, and then yeah. we have the sex tuple F. Sex tuple F. Yeah, it's the fight, fight, force, fling, float, fling. Exactly right. Obi Wan. He just, he's he's had enough. He is powerful. He is the master. He's using the hilt of his saber to smash the controls on Vader's suit. Oh, my Vader God. is struggling. Mike Tyson is falling. He's staggering. Obi-Wan hits him with a boulder. Vader is damn wheezing. The closed caption said he's wheezing. Obi-Wan somehow gets a slash on Vader's back. Oh, my God. And then the piece de resistance you mentioned in your sex tuple F, the floating. Obi-Wan does this huge jump and dive. He floats through the air, and he cuts the damn mask in half. Holy cow, and I'm thinking, Bubba, finish him. <laughs> finish him. How about this? Yeah, if, if Emperor Palpatine was there, he would have said, Obi-Wan, do it. What did you think of this scene? You see Anakin an halfway through the mask. It's half Anakin, half the Vader mask. It's half Anakin's voice, half Vader's mask. The blue and red lightsabers are blue and red lights playing across their faces. This was beautiful. I love, love, love It was love, love awesome. This. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You hear Anakin slash Vader say, Anakin's gone. I'm what remains. Obi-Wan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Anakin, for all of it. I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. Oh. The same way I will destroy you. And he's saying this, and you can tell he's falling apart because his mask is destroyed. His suit mm -hmm. is destroyed. Mm -hmm. Obi-Wan, then my friend is truly dead. Goodbye, Darth. Mm. Yes, and then he completely kills Darth Vader as he should. And whoa, 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 he just walks away. What the heck? Why did he walk away? Why did Vader, both of them had chances in this series to kill the other quite easily, and yet they both walk away? Why? What do you uh, think it is? Well, I think it's because they're in uh, uh, later <laughs> movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, that was the one thing, you know, that I talked about, you know, at, at the top. This is all great, mm-hmm. and 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 the action scenes were great. The fighting, oh my god, and that and to see for the first time ever, Darth really just get taken apart. Oh, he took it on the chin, on the head, on the back. Oh, yeah. oh. it's amazing. But in the end, we know neither one of these guys are going to die. No, but in the moment, and even now, I'll say it, in the moment, mm-hmm. it didn't matter. I was just enjoying it too oh, much. Oh, it was great. It was great. Great fight. Now, I did want, when Vader slash Anakin said this line, you mm-hmm. didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. I needed Obi-Wan to pipe up with, from a certain point of view. <laughs> 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 okay, so, hey, it was approximately, because I kept looking at the clock, at the 27-minute mark of the episode, this classic rematch of the century, whatever you want to call it, the fight is over. It was about a 12-minute fight. Admittedly, they cut it up, and I've already heard some people very frustrated that they cut from the Obi-Wan and Darth Vader fight to some of the Reva stuff. And I just think to myself, yeah, I wish they hadn't cut either, but they did cut in Revenge of the Sith when they cut uh, the Yoda-Palpatine fight. Lucas was a big fan of cutting, you know, between these action scenes up. And so cutting to Reva, it just can't match the Obi-Wan-Anakin fight. I didn't mind it too much. It was about 12 minutes, and it was 12 minutes of stuff I loved. I love it. Yeah, it would have been great if it hadn't been cut away from, especially to a storyline. <laughs> hey, Listeners, uh-huh. we're loving this fight. I mentioned, I I call it sacrilegious to say it's better than Revenge of the Sith, but for me, it was. I really do. We really do care what you think. Please give us a review on your podcast app of choice and let us know what you think about the podcast. But also you can tell us your thoughts on this show. We want to know so much. At Vader's Castle, he's recovered. He's got a new suit. He's got a new helmet. He's feeling good. He has oh, man. probes searching everywhere for Obi-Wan. He vows to destroy everything in his path until Kenobi is found. But wait, the boss is here. He has different things on your JIRA board that he wants you to put on high enough <laughs> priority rather than finding Kenobi. Palpatine even says, you seem agitated, my friend. Uh, yeah, agitated. I just got my freaking mask. I just got my butt kicked. Yeah, thanks a lot, boss. But oh, later, man. He, he puts on a brave face. He will not evade me again, Palpatine. I wonder if your thoughts are clear on this, Lord Vader. Perhaps your feelings for your old master have left you weakened. If your past cannot be overcome, Vader, Kenobi means nothing. Wait a minute, means nothing? You just said a second ago that you would destroy everything in your path until he was found. Anyway, Vader knows who the boss is, he says. He means nothing. I serve only you, my master. And we hear the Imperial March, heck yeah, on Vader on his throne. I love that shot. Uh, this Mustafar castle is a big part of the video games, big part of the lore. And this shot, especially, of Vader just sitting there with the V of the windows out onto the lava. I thought it was brilliant. It was so good. I mean, uh, look, you almost nothing can beat the Imperial March. Right. And they probably couldn't afford this song because it's such a big artist. But... Let me just pitch the alternate okay. music as they're coming right. out. Okay. Sure. All, right. Be sitting on the All by myself. <laughs> don't want to be. No, so anyway, I, I couldn't sing One that. One is can't the afford. loneliest <laughs> <now. laughs> Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. Is there any other songs that are twice as old as our listeners? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so hey, 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 we got to wrap up all these storylines. We do need that final, almost the the Lord of the Rings multiple endings. Now we got to go through our multiple endings. We got to have an mm-hmm. ending with Leia seeing, you know, Le- Leia has changed since she's been on her journey. We see her; she's no longer avoiding getting dressed up and going to these functions as a princess. She's getting yeah. dressed up herself. She does like to cowboy up, though, Bubba. Is that a holster? Her mom tells her, "I love it." Should you really, on a diplomatic mission, wear a holster, even if there isn't a blaster in it? What does that say about the the movie? <laughs> That's just letting people know you are going to kick A and take N. Hell yeah. She's out there with the Organas, Bale, and his wife, Ray. And the ship comes, and out on the ship steps Obi-Wan. But also is Lola. Leia actually screams, Lola, and runs to her droid. And it's only later that she reconnects with Ben. Way to go. Now, did you yes. like Leia's line to Ben? You know, I think you should sleep because you look like ass. Oh, man. <laughs> Obi-Wan laughs at it and then gives her an open hand slap for being so sassy. <laughs> well, and it's then... funny hear Obi-Wan laugh. He doesn't really ever laugh too much of these movies, for sure. Yeah, for sure. And then he has a nice, he says very nicely, this is a nice moment. He tells her that she got her wise, kind-hearted ways from her mother. 
Yep. And her passionate fearlessness and forthrightness from her father. Oh, yep. Those are and good traits. her sass from the early 30 slackers in the writer's room. <laughs> She got her slash, her sass from the writer's room, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is a touching moment. I know, you know, I've mentioned I've had a couple of problems with Reva. I've had a problems just like you have with little Leia. But that moment, goodbye, princess. Pretty nice. Really, really nice. But we got to have our other ending so we can wrap up Tatooine. Obi-Wan decides to put the cave up on Redfin. Yeah, Bubba, look, I, I know yeah. it's a seller's market, but no staging for this cave? I mean, really. By having nothing in the cave, it allows the new potential homeowner to imagine it the way they would decorate it. <laughs> yeah, oh, I love it. I love it. Here, there's here's just a crate in the center. What do you think about that? And then Obi-Wan goes over to see Owen and Baru and maybe Luke. He shows up riding a horse animal yep. that looks very closely related to the alien that Luke was dealing with earlier in the episode. I mean, these are like, they're like <laughs> distant cousin. Right. And then, this guy, uh, this guy gave me the parts I needed. <laughs> yeah. And then Owen says, what are you doing here? I thought you were going to keep your distance. Uh, hello, you son of a gun. <laughs> uh, rude. How about this? Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan tries to give, make some peace. He tells Owen, he's like, you were right. He needs to be a boy. The only protection he needs now, Owen, is you and Baru. But mostly Baru. Yeah. Have you seen her with a sawed-off <laughs> blaster Holy rifle? Holy cow. Yeah, I'm Holy staying away cow. from that lady. <laughs> Owen's still not sleeping in the house due to the lack of foliage now on the deck. <laughs> now, Ben, he's, like, he's going he's gonna to leave again. He's like, yep. later. But then Owen calls him back, tang with Luke, and you just have to assume... You know, Luke's not going to remember. And it, well, what does Ben say? Hello there. Love Get it. a new catchphrase. Wait, no, Obi-Wan. you got to keep. You got to keep your catchphrase. catchphrase. What do you say? He said that at least twice. Well, you have, of course, the first words Obi Wan says to v- people who watch these as they were chronologically released was hello there to R2-D2 after the sand people have attacked Luke and such. And so I thought it was fun. I loved hearing hello there. Yeah. Then o- Obi-Wan. You've already heard it. Obi-Wan, he's he's made his peace with Owen Baru with his his new status in life. Mm-hmm. You know, this he did quote unquote change. He was a he was a shell of himself. He got his groove back and now he's not going to be living in a darn cave anymore. Good work, Obi-Wan. Everything, everything's done. Nothing's left in this series except... Oh, well, you know, he's been begging and pleading for guidance Mm -hmm. for the whole time. And so finally, as he's finally as he's riding the shopkeeper's distant cousin in the desert, he hallucinates Liam Neeson, who has a very particular set of lightsabers. Oh, man. How about this? Qui-Gon Jinn got snarky in the afterlight. Well, it took you long enough. Hello. Oh, man. And then he says, I was always here, Obi-Wan. You just were not ready to see. Bubba, is this a Star Wars version of the Footsteps poster? Oh, man. Well, I wanted to post credit scenes where Obi-Wan says, Hey, ghosty, Qui-Gon, remember how you made me promise you that I trained the boy, the boy who grew up to be Sith Hitler or <laughs> Sithler? I mean, oh, come on. Oh, man. Really bad ideas, ghost. Oh, man. And, and, and then and then Obi-Wan's mount says, can we hurry up? I got to go back and st- do some stalking in the store. <laughs> so, hey, that's it. Six episodes. There was talk that there had been editing and possibly reshoots on this final episode to make a season two possible. I don't think so. I think this is where the show was always headed because so many things do pay off that were set up earlier in the season. So... I think it was great. It was not perfect, in my opinion. If it was perfect for you, I love it. Write to us and tell us your favorite moment. But I think it works as a six season, you know, six episode story about what happened between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. I think it works. All right. Well, wait, hold on, though, Bubba. Hold on. Yeah, since we're done discussing this, this is a perfect setup for one of our standard games we do every Ooh, episode, every the Bounty episode. Hunter Guild Battle, Who Wins the Puck? So let's have a debate. This was pretty self-contained. The only thing that I think they might have done different would maybe have a, if this was standalone, was have a different, more satisfying completion for Reva. Maybe some of that got rewritten. I don't know. But the question is, the question is, 
Here we've had the six episodes. It's the perfect interim, except for making sure they retain their subscribers. Should there be a season two? That's the Bounty Hunter Guild battle. Bubba, I'm going to let you pick first, and then I will provide an opposite answer, which will be the right answer. Well, I think you kind of hinted, Catfish, that there are certain points of view that you could look at this. And if you are Disney Plus, I think you want a second season without doubt. You release this thing opposite Netflix's big gun Stranger Things. And although Netflix has a, you know, so many more subscribers and Stranger Things did have more viewers, you held your own pretty good against Netflix's Netflix's biggest hit. And so if you are a Disney executive or a Disney Plus executive, mm-hmm. I think you want a season two without question. I think there can't be any debate from that point of view. No, I completely agree with that. That's not the question. The question is, from a fan's there be point a of view, two? from an artistic point of view. Yeah. I think I would enjoy it, but I'm going to go ahead and say no. There shouldn't be a season two. Those two meetups between Darth Vader and Obi Wan were incredible. I love the moment in episode three. I love the moment here in the final episode. They can't meet again. You You do have to keep it rare. So they had one fight 10 years later, they ran into each other twice and had more fights. And then they go another decade and finally have the final fight they'll ever have between them. And so if you can't really have an Obi-Wan Vader matchup again, then what is Obi-Wan's story? The, The showrunner of this six episodes, Deborah Chow, she fought to get Vader in it. And part of her argument was Obi-Wan's story is tied to Anakin slash Vader. There can't be an Obi-Wan story which doesn't have that, where where Anakin Vader isn't a part of it, really, if you think of it in those terms. And so because I don't think there can be another fight for the continuity and because they can't meet again and because that would mean a second season without really Vader, in my opinion, I'm going to say, no, you can't have a second season. No, there shouldn't be a second season. I can be swayed, Catfish. So if you want to, if you want to take the other side of this bounty hunter guild battle and win the bounty puck, for this debate, I, I can be swayed, but ignoring the Disney Plus point of view, I think as a Star Wars fan, I'd certainly watch it. I'd probably enjoy it, but I'm going to say no season two. What do you think? Well, Bubba, as someone who argued earlier that really this season itself wasn't a necessity, clearly I am going to argue that there should be a season two. Why? Because so many people connect With all these characters, they want to see further adventures of Obi-Wan. And Mm -hmm. Obi-Wan and Darth do not need to meet again. They can be on separate paths. We love these characters so much. I mean, you and I, we got so... I mean, we were like... We were just having nerd giggles when we both saw Darth Vader again. So give us more of Darth. Let's see what happens when the Grand Inquisitor uses the word must again. Let's see Obi Wan doing <laughs> doing his stuff. He's yep. gonna go off. You know, let's 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 see them kind of build their two separate worlds that we know are gonna clash again. And we've got other characters that could do stuff too. Obviously, we want to see Reva and Haja together going through. Reva will be killing people. Haja will be stealing their goods. This is another fun crew to watch and definitely a Disney Plus storyline that people will want to see, the killing, the stealing. (laughs) So, you know, we could see a little bit more of Princess Leia's life. Please, I don't want to see any of the politics again with Jimmy Smith. Uh, I don't care about that. But there is a lot that we could still flesh out with. I agree with you. We should not have more interaction between Darth and Obi-Wan, but there's a lot of time for them to cover between this and the movies, and we can see them building up the two different sides. Well, Catfish, I said I could be convinced, Mm -hmm. and you didn't. No, I'm kidding. Actually, your very first point did kind of convince me. So once again, I'm talking about for me, 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 me. If you point out, I think you're absolutely correct, and our, our polls after all these episodes confirm, there is a huge portion of the Star Wars fan base that loves Obi-Wan and and has a real connection to all these characters. And they grew a connection to little Leia and probably after this episode, (laughs) butt kicking Baru, right? They probably do have a big connection to him. Who cares what I think if these people love these, these characters and I'm not saying there aren't great stories and maybe the novels or comics or what have you, but yeah, if you think that audience 
you know, loves these characters. Why not give them time to spend, sorry, a chance to spend more time with them? You've convinced me. I flip sides. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Always, always argue a case you don't believe in. That's the way to argue it the most persuasively. All right, Bubba. Yeah. Whoa, Bounty Guild Hunter Battle of the Week complete. Now we have our second weekly game that is oh, yeah. the mandolicious line of the episode oh, yes. the the funniest the snarkiest the most impactful Bubba, you're gonna go off the board on this one because i have only one line Let's hear there it. is no try get off the potter shit you Wait, will it's an actual line in the episode yeah but it was an actual line inspired by the episode oh, okay all right okay i like going silly i like going sassy this mandalicious line came mainly from mm -hmm. snapbacks and insults love it that's how we developed this segment and this show doesn't really have as many as we would like no so i'm going to go to the one that everybody is talking about the one where vader anakin almost you says you said the episode could be titled blame ben yeah in this line, Vader and Anakin almost absolve Ben, where they say, I am not your failure, Obi-Wan. You didn't kill Anakin Skywalker. I did. Now, admittedly, he ruins it one second later when he says, the same way I will destroy you. And he's saying that really after he's been defeated. He's just still so filled with anger, he can't not say it. But to me, for a, a show that at times I've kind of attacked clunky writing or once again, clunky execution, that is a brilliant line and a line that I think has already, this episode hasn't even been out. Hold on, this episode, let me figure if I could do the math. This episode hasn't even been out 17 hours and that line has really connected with viewers. So that is my mandalicious line of the episode. I hate that it's so love serious, it. but it's the one I got to go with. I love it. I love it. Well, Bubba, speaking of going with, Mm -hmm. Whatever. We have our quadruple M. Wait, quadruple M? Yeah, our Matt Murdock musical analysis of Heck the yeah. week. He was we he was gone last week. He took a little vacation to Tatooine, and now mm -hmm. he's back with sand in his shoes and love in his heart. So let's listen to what Matt has to say. Hello there. In a recent episode of Parsec Passion, Baba asked a very interesting question. And I'm not giving a direct quote, but to paraphrase his question was, would some of the scenes in this Obi-Wan series feel more engaging if we heard more of the themes that we are familiar with? And I'll add to that, we are familiar with many of the characters in this series, even if those characters haven't had a specific theme made for them, either in the movies or here. There are exceptions to that, of course. We know that there is a theme for the Empire, which was largely associated with Darth Vader, called the Imperial March. There was a theme for Leah, which was used very minimally in A New Hope. But my question further becomes, would it actually make a difference? Because a good majority of the music in these episodes of Obi-Wan has been based on a theme written by John Williams. The Obi-Wan theme, which we explored in the very first edition of covering Obi-Wan, is a completely new theme, but it is penned by John Williams and has only been arranged and orchestrated by Natalie. In actuality, there's been very few new themes throughout the course of this series. Natalie has done a good job of creating kind of a sinister sound for Darth Vader or for the Inquisitors. She introduced a theme for Leah in the first episode, but really hasn't used it all of that much. Most of the music has been about Obi-Wan. So maybe, because that is a John Williams theme, we should be looking deeper into this question and realize where a lot of John Williams' ideas for the original trilogy actually came from. And the answer to that is Gustav Holst. In fact, a lot of Holst's music was actually used as a temporary score for Star Wars A New Hope before John Williams did his composing. And John Williams took a lot of those same sensibilities from Gustav Holst's The Planets to create some of the iconic moments in the original movie. For instance, think about anything associated with the Death Star in A New Hope, be that Luke, Leia, and Han, and Chewie, and the gang all trying to get out of there or even the rebels returning to try and destroy it. No matter what kind of melodies or whatever is placed on the top, you'll generally find a tympanic rhythm underneath, meaning a rhythm on the timpani, literally, that is taken directly from 
hosts the planet. So with that in mind, maybe the question to ask is, and this isn't just in regard to Natalie, it's in regard to all of the Disney Plus series on Star Wars, and even the last three movies that were produced. Is our dissatisfaction with the way the scenes feel to us, if it is musically oriented, is it related to the fact that there is less and less of the host influence that we associate so much with technically the first trilogy? I think that is the bigger question to ask. And as far as whether Natalie is offering tribute or not to the Williams score, I don't think there's any question of that. For instance, in Part 5, when Darth Vader was moving through the corridors towards the two transport ships that he thought was one transport ship, we heard this. Now, the important thing to note about how that is a tribute to actually the Imperial March theme is in the rhythm of the accompanying ostinato pattern. This. That is the exact same ostinato pattern that is used in the Imperial March, where, of course, the music is one of our favorite themes in Star Wars of all time, right? This one. Because of that, I don't think we can actually say that the music is having that much of an effect on us. As I said before, it's probably more about the roots of the inspiration for the music. And while Natalie's not giving you the imperial theme verbatim, so to speak, she is giving you elements, just as I pointed out in episode three that she was giving you other little homages to John Williams' score within her own. So I don't really think that that's the problem. So, Bubba, hopefully that answers your question. But I've spent all of this time answering that question rather than talking about this final episode of Obi-Wan, Part 6. Now, you may be wondering why I specifically brought up the Imperial March and I briefly mentioned at the beginning of this segment about a theme for Princess Leia that was, in my opinion, way underused for Leia throughout all six of the films that we saw her in. As it turns out, For those of you who wanted more Star Wars themes in your Obi-Wan series, you got them. We've already talked about the Imperial March in this part six of Obi-Wan. We, of course, got that very melody after Darth communicated with the Emperor. And we got, I think, one of John Williams' best pieces, the theme for Leia in the talk between Obi-Wan and her on Alderaan. And that's what I'm going to leave you with for this series. After I finish playing, you'll be back with Bubba and Catfish. So thanks for listening to these, and may the Force be with you. There's a reason why we have Matt on all these podcasts. Not only is our, he our friend, not only is he funny and insightful. He's cheap. He just knows his stuff. He's oh, cheap. Oh, right. right. That He's as well. <laughs> 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 He's at Musical Concepts on Twitter. If you've enjoyed Matt's musical analysis, please write him at Musical Concepts on Twitter and talk to him. He is a big part of uh, everything here at Double P Podcast. And uh, we love him. And he's going to be doing a million podcasts, as we mentioned at the top as we go through this. But hey, I love it. We always say we save the best for last. That's because we're saving your feedback for last. We oh, love, I love it. We have people we call double L's. Double L's? Loyal listeners. Oh, and little Leia's. Your opinion, uh, we, they're people we call little Leia's, and we listen to them just like Obi-Wan listens to her. Our first bit is from a true double L catfish. Oh, yes, it is Endless Mike at Endless Mike 03. He sent us a picture. It says he's wearing the shirt he won from the at double PHQ Parsec Passion Podcast. And gosh darn it, if he doesn't look good in that shirt, and if he that does. is not a cool freaking shirt that you got, Bubba. 
Yeah, we give away shirts to our on our podcast. We'll probably give away some more prizes when Andor shows up. It really does look good on Endless Mike. I, I ordered it from this fun store in England, and I'm like, yeah, that's a pretty sharp uh, Boba Fett shirt there. So, hey, yeah. become a loyal listener. You'll be eligible to win these great prizes as well. Because we're recording this so soon after episode six, we really only have one bit of episode six feedback so far, but we do have a lot of feedback from last week's episode, episode five. So Catfish, they're all from Great Double L's. Why don't you take us to this first bit? All right. Well, uh, we'll go for part five first. Camille at Harley Camille says, I love how this show is connecting the prequels to the animated series to the original trilogy. Mm -hmm. I really like Star Wars Rebels. It's worth the watch. Yep. I love the flashback to seeing Vader at his full power. FYI, I'm a fifth grade teacher, so I'm able to tolerate the sassy and undisciplined doing oh, the Lord's work, Harley. She is. She is. Teachers, we love them. We don't pay them enough. That's how much we love them. We decide not to pay them. Camille, we love this feedback. And I love hearing from people who love the animated shows like Star Wars Rebels. Another true double L, Laura McMillian at Mizocat on Twitter. Laura, we love her. She's been giving us some great episode titles, and she created an episode title for part five. You ready for this one? Yeah, tell me. She thought part five, episode five, was the most heartbreaking one in the season so far. The episode, she names it, Alas, Ned B, We Hardly Knew Thee. Oh, man. Oh, man. And let me say, they just released Star Wars Knows How to Make Money. They released a really cool-looking Ned B action figure. So uh, I think a Black Series action figure. It looks really cool, Laura. So uh, maybe I'll get that and give that away as a prize sometime. Laura also said, to answer one of the questions we raised in our podcast about Episode 4, Laura wrote, she does like all the animated shows, and she said she hadn't seen that one yet. Resistance, that was the one that was kind of almost anime style, and uh, you know, 2D animation, more kind of anime style. And I think, even though I'm not a huge animated show fan, I did watch all of the animated shows. I tried to and watched Resistance. And there are a couple of episodes of Resistance, Resistance that are actually really good, Laura. So I'm not sure it's worth, thing, worth watching all of Resistance. But man, there are a couple where you're like, oh, wow, this show actually is pretty good. Hey, we got a final bit of feedback here about episode five, Catfish. Take it away. Pat Man 23, Patrick Spinagle, old friend of the show. Holy cow. I said, just got around to seeing Kenobi part five, also known as Alas Ned B. We hardly knew thee. I enjoyed it a great deal. Nice storyline with Reva. Leia was adorable as always. That's a shot at me. I, I, <laughs> I clearly, uh, the flashbacks, both Kenobi, Anakin and Reva's were nicely woven in. Vader got schooled by Ben. So he was not yet the master. Boom. Boom. Oh, man. Pat, man, all you guys, once again, we, we're not going to have any podcast for a while until Andor comes out. But still, please tell us what you thought of this part six. It's very fascinating. And because we're doing this podcast so soon after part six dropped, we only have one bit of feedback. It's from a great listener, Elias Sideways. And why I love Elias is that here I'm real positive on these episodes, and especially this episode I was through the mood of. Elias listens to our podcast the whole way through, even though the show hasn't connected with him in any way. And so here's his feedback for episode six. He wrote, so we begin at Tatooine. Reva has traveled there at the same time as our heroes have been pursued from the last episode. Am I wrong or is there some time shenanigans going on? I think, I think, I'll, this is a bubba insert. Elias, I think you're right. I also think, wasn't she just left on the planet? Was there a spaceship just left there so that she could fly away and escape in? I said, it had a so. Medi doc on it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Elias continues. Also, let's get it straight. Only Reva was aware of Princess Leia through this whole ordeal. Seriously? We're not breaking canon, right? As for the fight scenes, I thought everything was perfect. Just hoping for more shaky cam. <laughs> we can't get enough of that. Sigh. Hashtag sarcasm. Oh, man. You know, Elias, I, you know, I'm sorry it didn't connect with you. I love these fight scenes. But all right, let's, he's got this final bit of feedback, but he says, but serious, what was the point of this show? Kenobi and Leia's dad, Bail Organa, recklessly endangered everything, but there were no stakes. Kenobi versus Vader was interesting, but poorly executed, in his opinion. Just meh. Elias, once again, I, I, I feel bad for you, actually, that it didn't work for you. I also feel really proud of you that you're able to still kind of listen to a podcast that's very positive on it and very silly on it. And so, uh, Elias, thank and you so thank much you for, for your feedback. Yeah, we yeah. really appreciate it. Catfish, as we wrap up this podcast, let me just yep, say the things we've been, uh, we said at the beginning. Mm -hmm. In just 71 days from today, on August 31st, the Parsec Passion Podcast, this feed you're downloading right now, we're going to be back covering Andor. On this show, Kenobi, I mentioned a couple of times how I thought the 
volume, aka these rear projected sets that they do, the Mandalorian and Obi-Wan on, I thought they were very limiting. They weren't used at all on Andor, which shot in London before the volume in London was really built. And so I think Andor's going to have a real more majestic, wide open field because they had to shoot on location at real world location so much. That's 71 days from now. If you subscribe to our social media things at double PHQ, the word double single letter PHQ for headquarters on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook.com slash double PHQ. You're going to find out about all the podcasts we have coming up next week. We're going to be starting season two of Only Murders in the Building. On August 21st, we're going back to the Joffrey podcast feed for the House of Dragon, House of the Dragon season one. We've got another murder mystery coming in, up in October, Magpie Murders. We've got Babylon Berlin season four, The Crown season five, His Dark Materials season three. Matt's going to be doing the Lord of Rings, the Rings of Power. We probably will be doing 1899 as kind of a continuation of our coverage of Netflix's Dark, that fun, twisty show. So, hey, we're covering a lot of stuff. We want you to be in on all of it. We really haven't covered a lemon show since Penny Dreadful City of Angels. Oh, maybe, maybe why The Last Man was a bit of a lemon. But we tend to cover really fun shows. And we think you'll like these shows. We're going to be talking about it as a bit. And we want you on this journey. My name's Bubba. You can find me on Twitter at Fit and Trim. That's F I T T E N T R I M at Fit and Trim on Twitter. And I am Catfish. You can hit me up at CJGman67 on Twitter. On Instagram, please follow me. I am at G to the Man, G E E T O T H E M A N. I just joined Instagram. Follow me. And I'll follow you. And you'll hear us in 71 days on the... Say it. You're the one. <laughs> Say it. Oh, man. The client, Werner Herzog, there's, there's somebody